<laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? These are the snow geese that come here and visit us in uh, the wintertime here in Ridgecrest, coming down from Canada. But I'm not here to uh, review them. I got something neat for you here, something new. <laughs> They're gonna land over there. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna stay away from them. I'll bother the ravens, but I won't bother the snow geese. <laughs> what I got for you today is something new, folks. This is actually pretty darn neat. Uh, this is the Idea Fly Idea Idea Eight. Comes with an extra battery, by the way, include in addition to its other battery. Now you'll say to yourself, "Oh no, it's another one of those folding quadcopters." I've seen so many of these before. Well, yeah, it is, but there's something special about it other than the extra battery that you get. And anyway, I'm going to go over that first. Let's open it up first and look at it closely to see what is different about it. The idea 8, it's got your standard uh, auto switch on top. It has folding arms. It has a uh, how many milliamp hour battery? 500 milliamp hour battery. You get two of them to keep you flying. But if you look on the bottom of this thing, it also has something special. This is an optical flow sensor, folks. Um, it, it has helped, it is used to help keep the quadcopter steady while it's flying so it doesn't drift. Um, that's a big feature to add on to this. I hope I was, you know, this came, these type of sensors came out, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago. I'm just amazed that not many other quadcopters have incorporated them because it's relatively cheap to incorporate and it is a big feature. It's almost like having a GPS. It enables the quadcopter to hover steadily without your input. Additionally, it's got a 720p camera um, that can be tilted up or down, but that's not the big deal. It also comes if you open up the bottom or the back of it, it's got a little door in the back, and if you wiggle this out, hold on, folks, this might take a while because I don't have fingernails right now. I just clipped my nails. Okay, I was able to wiggle it out. Um, you use a little key, and you can get there's a little catch right here that you can pull this out, but look at this. What is this thing? This is a G sensor controller. Uh, really pretty darn neat. It includes G sensor control, you know, simulate G sensor on your phone, except you don't have to use your phone. Although I will be using this in combination with my other phone because it also does have Wi Fi FPV. So I'm just going to use the phone to make sure I'm centered in the shot and then continue filming. But um, let me go over the controller. It has two little control buttons. It has an on off switch here, and this switch here is for raising and lowering the quadcopter, you know, increasing throttle, decreasing throttle, and this going to the left and right changes its yaw. But the features of the quadcopter are controlled by this tiny little button, and um, actually, <laughs> there's two ways of controlling it. Uh, first, if you just leave it as you start it up, if you push up, that's for takeoff and landing. If you pull, push down, that's for emergency stop in the motor. Say you get the quadcopter stuck in a tree, pull down on it, and it'll, it'll shut it off. If you want to increase the rates of the quadcopter, the tilt angle you push to the left and if you want to do a flip you push to the right and then tell which direction to flip now if you hold this button down for two seconds the red light up here will start blinking and that gives you uh, the second mode of control um, if you push up while the red light is blinking that enters headless mode if you push to the left while that red light is blinking you go into one key return if you push to the right while that uh, light is blinking you go you can turn the lights on and off and if you push down the same as with the first mode is that's emergency stop to push push down on this controller so let's fire this up okay this is the hts ufo app available on google play and itunes and i'm going to hit start play and we should have fpv reception here shortly and we do now i do have that camera pointed all the way up so that's the view you see with the camera pointed all the way up i'm going to hit record there and i'm just going to hold the phone to my side and again i'm using this mainly just to check every once in a while the, the pointing of the camera. Uh, I do have a cheat sheet here that I'm gonna need here because uh, this is one of the first times I've flown it. But we're gonna do the takeoff first, hitting the button up to start the motors. Okay, so yeah, this controls it. Let's go up higher, increasing the throttle by pushing that stick. Now, I wanna go into headless mode and the reason I want to go and let's go up wind a bit and to do headless mode I gotta push this button down and hold it for two seconds and then make sure the lights are flare oh no it was emergency stop wasn't it <laughs> headless mode is up we're gonna start off in headless mode folks and be careful pulling down is that emergency stop so am I still recording 
Yeah, I'm still recording. We're going to point that direction. And headless mode should be... i got to check to make sure the lights are blinking. And that starts the motor. Okay, let's, let's land it again by pressing up. We land it. I gotta hold this button down for two seconds. Okay, take off. You can't do takeoff once you're in this headless mode. Okay, coming out of headless mode. Okay, I'm going up higher. Pushing forward. I need to increase the rates, so I'm gonna to push to the left. We should be in higher rate. So going up, going into higher rate. What I'm trying to do, folks, is get in front of it. Yeah, don't need headless mode. Just turn the uh, stick around and you got it. Let's go up a bit higher. <laughs> I like my shirt today, folks. I seem to have lost the signal. <laughs> Darn. So we're going to reboot it again to see if we can get that signal. So take off land is this, you push up on this stick, or this stick here. Okay, I am going to try to reboot it to see if we can get the signal back again because I've lost signal. Okay, it came back, it came back. Um, just took a second there. Okay, what I'm going to do now, folks, is point it this way. And to take off, I am going to give it an upward push. Increase throttle. I'm going up a bit higher to my head view. And turning this around like so. And say... I got my shirt today, folks. It froze again. <laughs> I'm only a few, few inches away. Okay. So we, I don't know. Flies easy enough with this thing. Um, I do have an extra battery. I'm gonna try flying it with the phone next, using the phone signal. I think these two are conflicting with each other, and I think that might be the issue why I'm seeing reduced uh, Wi-Fi range here. You know, the phone and the this controller are both transmitting on 2.4 gigahertz. So, okay, let's go up that way. Come down a bit, too. Bring it in close. Actually, let's land it and actually do use the phone. We'll try, try the phone next. But it is somewhat stable. See how I'm controlling it? Okay. So we are going to do the landing with this controller, and that is to push up on this stick here. And we're going to switch the app control. Headless mode is off. Make sure my sticks work. And doing another automatic takeoff again. There we go. Going up higher. Let's see if we get better reception here this time. than the last time yeah so you know the controller is neat but if you're using it in conjunction with the phone um, you get reduced <laughs> signal uh, the, you know they're both transmitting on uh, the same frequency there which is 2.4 gigahertz and this is nice and stable by the way look at that look at that I hope this video is coming out nicely so controlling with the phone seems to be a uh, actually easier <laughs> than the, its controller. The signal looks good. Let's stay, send it up higher. Send it up higher and see what how it looks. Take a look around the neighborhood here. Right about there. And we'll do a yaw. Yaw turn. Yaw. Yaw. And that's its camera, folks. Okay, and coming back down, reducing throttle. 
actually flies very nicely with the phone. So, <laughs> yeah, that controller is a little bit confusing. Uh, we're, I think we're starting to see some blinking here. So that's probably the LVC warning. So let's, with the remaining uh, power we got, let's see how this flies with the sticks. Not too bad flying it with the phone. And I got a, you know, my phone, oh, there we go. That's the flight time. We're going to, I think we're getting close to the flight time limit. I also got a little bit of a wind there. You know what? Since this comes with two batteries, I'm going to give it one more flight. Well, there, it's, that's its flight time, folks. I'm going to swap out the battery and continue the flight. So hold on for the second part of this flight. Okay, we're going to send it up one more time. Again, flying it with the app. You know, since this has optical flow sensors, using the app makes it flying this very easy uh, with the phone, vice its controller. So again, I recommend using your phone to control this thing. It's, it actually flies very nicely with the phone. Okay, we are recording, hitting takeoff. Let's see how well it holds that position. It's actually holding nice. I got a wind here, by the way, folks. Let's go a bit higher and push. Let's go out into the sun. Let's go over here. Right about there. Let go. Let go of the sticks. Let's see if it stop its, stops itself. Look at that position hold on this thing. That is very nice. Let's rotate. Going up higher a bit. Right about there. Rotating it. When you rotate it, it moves a bit. But then it stables itself off. And I'm getting back into the view. Again, I'm not doing anything, folks. I'm not flying it. It is holding its position by itself. Let's come down a little lower so you see me. So this would be a good... Actually, really cool, actually. I like it. It's that little sensor on the bottom of it. Provides um, position hold. It's altitude hold moves up and down. Oops, HTS UFO has stopped. And when HTS UFO stops, what we see is it lands itself. Okay, and that's cool too. I, I like that idea too. So we're going to have to reboot H, well, HTS UFO rebooted itself. Let's take off from here. Hitting start. See if we got video back. Maybe we need to reboot the quadcopter to get that video back. Hold on, folks. Okay, I rebooted the quadcopter, hitting start, and we have FPV uh, selecting on, and altitude hold mode on again, autom and hitting record again, and hitting automatic takeoff, and going back up again. Notice I'm not wearing sandals today, folks. It's a little bit, getting a little bit chilly for sandals. So, you want an FPV uh, selfie quadcopter, a cheap FPV selfie quad, well, this is, you know, Recently priced FPV selfie quad copter. This might be for you. It doesn't require a lot of knowledge to fly it. Um, if that is, if you're trying to fly it with your phone. If you try to fly it with the the G sensor controller, it's not as cool. I think this is much better. You know, look, <laughs> I'm not doing anything. It's just recording me. Uh, let's take a photo. People say I don't take enough photos of myself with this. Okay, let's come down a little bit lower. The wind's blowing a bit. That's why it's going up there. It's using a barometric sensor to uh, record and that barometric sensors well the wind's coming this way it's not moving let's hit photo take another photo <laughs> so all in all cool quadcopter really cool um, I hope they come out with more of these optical sensor quadcopters in the future folks uh, that that really make especially for selfie quadcopters that makes this worth its uh, value you know um, I hope the camera is vi recording well we'll find out here in post-production but all in all you know if you're looking for s something cheap and easy to throw in your pocket and take with you and go fly you get two batteries you know and something that's easy to fly that doesn't require you know manipulating much of the controls uh, if you're using your phone that is <laughs> this is it this might be it for you folks I like it I actually like this I'm keeping this one this is a quadcopter 101 keeper because of its capability. So, you know, we do get Wi-Fi lag. I could see it. I'm going to hit stop here and start the video again. You get the usual Wi-Fi lag, but if you stay close and you're using this as a selfie quadcopter. Here, let me try something real quick. Let's land in my hand.
Yeah, I'm not gonna land in my hand. This is what it shut off. Let's land on the ground. What I wanna do, what I wanna do is lower the camera. You can do this too. So let's point the camera 45 degrees down. Do that, uh, stop the recording, start the recording, and start the recording again. Take off. I'm going up higher. Till we are right about there. And say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? <laughs> Pretty cool. I like it. So, hope you do too. I, I want to see how long this battery lasts. <laughs> you can do aerial shots of yourself. <laughs> so, let's try headless mode again. More headless mode. Where are you, headless mode? There you are. I don't know which way we were pointed. We were pointed that way, so we're gonna pull it back. Ah, eh, forget the headless boat for now. <laughs> Turning it toward me again. It's holding its position. We are, well, it's starting to blow a bit with when I'm coming down lower. <laughs> Hopefully that'll catch the ground. There we go. It's moving a bit with the wind. Coming down lower. Right about there. Moving a bit with the wind. So, let's land it real quick. Landing it. And for the final part of its battery, final part of its battery, let's put it back up again. And stopping the video, starting the video one more time. Automatic takeoff. Going up higher, and we'll fin finish the video right here with my colorful shirt. So, yeah, I like this one, and I hope to see more optical sensor, optical flow quadcopters come out in the future. Um, they're just neat, you know. I had the little CXOF 720p. Uh, that was a neat quadcopter. This one seems to have a better camera on it than that, even though they're both 720p. This one, looking on my screen, it looks a lot. A lot sharper so I hope it's coming a lot sharper but again I mean I am seeing some Wi-Fi lag to be expected since this is a Wi-Fi flyer coming down lower <laughs> okay it's a selfie quadcopter selfie quadcopter that works very well so should I fly it until it uh, its battery dies I think I will I'll just keep on stand oh there we go keep on stammering and yakking until there we go that's its flight time and then I'm gonna hit stop on the recording so all in all, the Idea 8, um, it, the idea behind it is really good. It's a good flyer or a good selfie quadcopter. This is one of the best selfies that I've seen because it requires virtually no flying to fly it. Um, the provided G-Sensor controller leaves a lot to be desired, very confusing, but flying it with your phone, uh, very easy, especially because of this optical flow sensor. Where is that thing at? This optical flow sensor, which holds it relatively steady, even with a bre quite a bit of bit of a breeze I got today. So I hope you enjoyed this flight, this Quadcopter 101. Signing out.